Oh yeah, friends and fam. Welcome back to another episode of Captain Coleslaw Outdoors with yours truly. So today, we are out on a major river system and we are tackling cool water species post storm front. But basically what we're looking at here is a warm water river system that has cool water tendencies. We can expect to catch some species of fish in this river system that you're not going to find in eutrophic watersheds where you have a lot of muddy bottom, a lot of plant matter, extremely warm water, and pollution really stagnates. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to fish this cool water ecosystem for whatever bites. But the one thing that's going to be a little crazy is it is extremely, if you take a look, it's extremely cloudy, overcast. We've been getting rain for the last four days after about 30 days of no rain at all. So this water is actually dropping in temperature. It's rising in level and the clarity has maintained itself, although it's probably browned up just a little bit. So if I had to guess, there's a lot of fish in this river that have been struggling with the heat because what that actually means is it's harder for them to respirate, meaning the oxygen in the water is harder for them to breathe. So they don't want to do as much. And if they do feed, they feed at night. And you know, night fishing is a thing, but I got a life too and sleep is part of that. So our goal today is we're going to actually go out into this river system here, which is a little bit cooler, a little bit higher, a little bit darker water. So the fish are going to be less spooked by big lures and we're gonna row the kayak upstream about a mile and we're gonna float this big deep hole at this part of the river where I think a lot of game fish have been holding up. You might find some largemouth, bluegills, and catfish, but in this rocky terrain you also get a lot of walleye, you get some what they call freshwater drum which are hard to catch but absolutely huge, northern pike, muskies, yellow perch, some smallmouth bass I anticipate. This is the type of water that they really thrive in. So basically we're gonna go out with a real small soft plastic and we're just gonna jig it off the bottom and we're just gonna catch whatever bites. But really we're not gonna know until we get out there and we figure out what pattern they wanna feed on and we're just gonna enjoy the day. That weather system has helped this water improve in its quality and maybe that's just what we need for the fish to wake up and start feeding. Hopefully there's something swimming around in this jungle of a river system. I'm excited, let's go see what we can get. All right guys, so we're kind of out here where we want to be. The water's pretty shallow in this area. I anticipate if we run into any game fish out here, it's probably gonna be smallmouth bass, Maybe we could pick up something exotic, like a walleye or a pike. The first thing I've noticed about this body of water is that even though it's a big river, it has a very rocky bottom. And that's gonna make this play like a cool water fishery because it warms up real fast, but it can also cool down. There's no mud layered at the bottom to act like a blanket to insulate and absorb heat. It's a good looking watershed and this river actually stays fairly shallow and then it deepens into some holes. So if we don't get anything, out in this immediate stretch, we're not going to abandon our little drift here. We're gonna actually fish those deeper areas as well. We're just gonna fish off the bottom with soft plastics uh, and see what we can catch. Hopefully something's biting. Fishing rivers like this can be tough. The water's moving, the water's always changing, and the fish change with it just as dramatically. So a couple keys that we're gonna be looking for. We're gonna look for pockets of deep water amongst the riverbed where fish might be stacking up down low. That's gonna allow them to hide from predators and their prey in the larger specimens. The other thing too is with current, you got eddy currents. You got seams that are forming that have higher oxygen content to the rest of the river. And those are extremely popular spots for the game fish. So if we run into some big rocks or a big sunken log or a tree where there's a current running off of it, Chances are, even though this water isn't moving as fast as I thought it would, these seams are still gonna hold fish. So we'll keep an eye out for the seams. We'll keep an eye out for the deep holes and pockets. And we're gonna really work our lures down on the bottom, working low and slow and seeing what we can get. Late summer sprinkles, man. 
Ah. These little fish are just blasting my baits. There we go. There's something. What do we got? What do we got? Oh, this is a, that's a big fish. Whatever it is. Oh, it's a catfish. <laughs> Son of a gun. Not a big fish, just a feisty fish. In the rain. Son of a gun. Look at that. <laughs> ah, man. I set the hook on him good. There we go, look at that, that's a young channel catfish. Now, if you're any sort of cat fisherman, you might be asking yourself, how did you just catch a channel cat on artificial bait? They're more than just a scent predator. You can see those barbels around his face, which actually allow this fish to taste, but they also have large eyes, which allow them to see very well as well. So this fish is actually a very apt predator for this ecosystem. which he decided to make a quick exit to. <laughs> Open-minded angler over here. We're just trying to explore this ecosystem, this, this rainy jungle, try to find the fish that are gonna bite, whatever species that might be. There's a bite. All right. <laughs> well, as anticipated, there's a smallmouth bass for you. There you go. Another micro smallie. At least we got two fish. Two for two on the species. That's a small <laughs> Oh, there we go. Now that's a better small mouth. There we go. Man, he pounced on that. Another little 12 incher. I'll try and fish up against these blocks, see what we can get. There's fish. <laughs> Nugget smallmouth. Look at this guy. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> it's a walleye. Are you kidding me? <laughs> what? That is crazy. Oh, that is cool. That is cool. Are you joking? Let me hold this one like this because this guy got some chompers. Well guys, that's our new fish of the day and that's one of the species we thought we would catch in this low water. This is a walleye. So check this guy out. Delicious eating. This is a smaller one though. We can't keep this one, unfortunately. They need to be 15 inches. This guy's about 13. They call these guys sand lizards because they have that long lizard profile shape and have that real sandy color. They're also notorious for these big old chompers they have, big old sharp teeth in order to let them hunt minnows and crayfish in the dark and minimize their prey's ability of getting away. You can tell it's a walleye too because if you look at the end of his tail, it's got a white spot. See that little white spot at the end of the tail there on the bottom of the caudal fin? So that is cool. The low light water brings out all kinds of fish, all different types of species, and walleye is one we can add to it.
it's always cool to catch these species which are associated with the specific watershed and you know this little walleye is no different sweet That looks like a damn rain cloud. Looks like rain coming. Let's take a look. There's a lot of stuff north of us. Whoa, that's a lot of water north. Good Lord. On cue. Let the rain, let the rains come down. We got about two hours before a absolutely enormous swell hits us. I'm sure you saw it on the radar. It ain't looking pretty. So hopefully that front pushing through gets these fish feeding a little bit. I would want nothing more but to catch something big and toothy in the rain. Cause it is about to pour. On cue. Oh dear. Woo, that is some wet rain there, boys and girls. Good thing there's a bridge. We got under this tree here to try to stay out of the rain. Literally the launch is right over there, so I'm not super, super worried. I'll give it a few minutes, see if it can pass up. And I think when the next break happens, we gotta make a break for it and get out of here. Gotta take advantage of the opportunities again. I know it's raining, but you know what? We don't have a whole lot of days left and we made the investment to come out here as long as we don't feel like our lives are in jeopardy, weather the storm, there might be some pattern to exploit and some fish to catch because of it. There's gotta be a fish under this tree. I don't know what species, but there's gotta be something. There we go. Right off the end of that tree. All right. <laughs> it's a good smallmouth. Best one of the day, by far. Pummeled the Ned rig, pummeled it. Check it out, look at that, nice. And that, my friends, right there is why you play the game. Got ourselves a smallmouth right off this tree, kind of as we anticipated. <laughs> you wait out in the rain, doesn't mean the fish aren't biting. I think we're going to end this episode on this guy right here. So thank you so much for attending this episode of Captain Coleslaw Outdoors. Like and subscribe, or like and subscribe, whatever one it is. 
stay tuned for more fish catching action just like this. Until next time, shoot straight, stay strong. For now, that's it. I'll catch you all on the next one.